Hello everyone, welcome back. Okay, for those of you that were commenting on my hair video saying, so if you should do a video of your natural hair, here it is. Well, I mean, not quite. I could not leave the front pieces of my hair. I posted on my Instagram stories. When I first left my hair to air dry, I genuinely looked like Brian May. Anyway, today I'm gonna to be doing a full face of new makeup. I don't think I've done one of these in a while and I'm gonna be testing stuff, a mix of drugstore and high end. I'm gonna let you know my honest thoughts. If you like this kind of video, please give this a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Also, if you wanna subscribe, feel free. The button is just down here somewhere. I would love to have you. Anna, uh, let's get into it. The reason why my face is this glowy, by the way, is because my face and my neck were very distinctly different different so I put on some of those Ciate bronzing drops and I just used a brush and like buffed them all over my face along with some moisturizer. So for starters I'm gonna go with this which is the NYX Bear With Me Blur Blurring Tint Foundation and I saw this in Superdrug the other day. I've seen a few bits about this online but you know what I've only seen the adverts. I've not actually seen somebody physically apply this to their face and I'm a little bit concerned because it says it's a matte blurred finish which is the same thing that that Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector the matte version said and it was just... Uh really bad. I got the shade 06 Soft Beige. Okay, thank God. It looks like a normal foundation texture. It doesn't, it's not like a horrible silicone-y type one or anything, which is great. Okay, it feels quite a nice texture actually. I would say it's like a medium thickness and I'm just gonna try blending this in with a brush first and if this doesn't work then I'll use my fingers. Oh, it is matte. That is so weird. When you first apply it, it looked like it was gonna be quite glowy but then blending it out. You know what? That's actually got, wait a sec, let me just turn down the brightness. That has got a lot of better coverage than I thought it would. By the way, I just have moisturizer and those like bronzing drops on underneath. I don't have a new primer to test, so I thought with something matte, it's probably best to just moisturize first. Mmm, shade looking good. Oh my god. By the way, I don't often go for matte stuff anymore. Unless it's like powder, obviously. Um, but in terms of foundations, I don't tend to go for matte ones, just because I find that they tend to, don't know, just make the skin look a little bit older. I would say it's more of like a satin finish. I think if I used a matte primer with this, it would be pretty matte, because obviously my skin was quite glowy beforehand, but it's definitely mattified it compared to what it was like before. It's got a nice medium coverage. It's covered everything that I wanted it to cover, and it actually looks really nice on my skin. Let me just zoom you in. I was expecting a like cakey, horrible, matte, dry looking mess, but it actually looks nice. I like it. It's a little bit more difficult to test in from like a dry skin point because at the moment I don't really have any active dry patches. My skin is looking pretty good uh, in terms of like dryness and stuff, but I think it looks pretty nice. I am pleasantly surprised by that. Didn't think I was gonna like the finish of it, but I'd say it's like a semi-matte satin kind of finish. Not bad, not bad. Next up, we have concealer, and I'm gonna use this, which is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Concealer. I got this in Superdrug a few weeks back when I did another one of these kind of videos of like testing new makeup, and I tried the Healthy Mix foundation in that, but I didn't try the concealer, so I thought I would give that a go today. And I got the shade 51 Claire Light in this concealer. It smells a little bit painty. By the way, I have no idea what's going on outside my window right now, so just bear with. It's a very thin concealer. I feel like maybe I will need more of this. Let's try. It feels very hydrating. It's like quite a liquidy, thin concealer which I have definitely put a bit too much of on, I think. I would say it's quite a natural one. It's definitely not a full coverage concealer, but on the daily, I don't mind that. What is going on out there? I'm gonna have a look out the window. I'm not sure how well this would do on any like blemishes or anything because I don't really have any right now to test it on, which is a blessing and a curse when you're doing makeup videos because I wanna test the coverage, but there's not really much to test the coverage of. I shouldn't complain. Please don't make me break out tomorrow. <laughs> Let's try it on this little scar. Yeah, it doesn't really cover much, to be honest. Fine if you're going for a natural look and you don't like to wear too much makeup, but if you're looking for something full coverage, that is not going to be the one for you. I'm just going to try adding a tiny dot of this. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer. I must have tried this in the past. I recently had a PR package from Milani, and this is the shade 120 Light Vanilla. I'm sure this concealer's been around for ages, but yeah, surely I've tried this. I don't really remember, but let's see if this can add any extra coverage. Yeah, that one's definitely got more coverage than the bourgeois one. And it feels a little bit thicker. Yeah, that's definitely given me more coverage, hasn't it? I mean, both concealers are fine. Do they beat my favourite concealers ever? Nah. For my cream bronzer, I've had this for ages and I actually forgot to try it, which I know sounds ridiculous. But I bought this, I think it was back like at the end of summer. No, wait, it must have been around like Halloween sort of time. It was around Taylor Swift album launch kind of time because I put in an order from Peaches and Cream because they had a dupe for one of the Pat McGrath eyeshadows. Anyway, that video is on my TikTok. But this is the Peaches and Cream Cream contour. I went for the shade, ah, 
hang on wait does it not say on here which shade i went for they have a couple different shades i think let me just double check my order this is the original shade of the cream contour and it's six pound fifty peaches is an indie brand that does a lot of like pigments like eye pigments and stuff but i saw this cream contour and thought you know what i love a cream contour i'm gonna give it a try so let me just dip my brush in here no idea how pigmented this is gonna be actually maybe that was too much no wait hang on just on the back of my hand it seems like it's a very sort of lightweight natural looking bronzer so i'm gonna load my brush up a little bit more oh too much too much Let me just go over that with my sponge. Yeah, it's a very warm shade. I would say it's more, it's definitely more of a bronzer than a contour. But then a lot of products are marketed as a cream contour and they're actually warm toned anyway. So, you know, it's not just them. Hmm, seems to be blending quite nicely. And I do like how it's buildable. It's not like, I mean, obviously when I first put it on, I would literally like done this with my brush. Um, But you just need to sort of like dab it in a little bit and then you can build it up sort of in layers because it's quite sheer. It is a little bit oily in terms of the texture. Let me just like feel it on the back of my hand. Yeah, it's a slightly more oily consistency, if that makes sense. But it seems to be working quite nicely with that base product that I've put on. I think it's pretty nice. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the Superdrug Studio London one. Let's just take some on my nose by the way this brush is the morphe v105 brush every time i use this on my videos people ask what brush i'm using for my nose contour it's such a good one right but when you go on the morphe website the v105 brush is a domed shape whereas this one is flat across the top so i don't know if they've changed it i've got no idea it's very confusing it is quite a warm shade it's a little bit warmer than like my rare beauty one that i usually use but for six pound fifty i think it's done the job pretty nicely the whole reason why i went into town yesterday was to try and find the new maybelline mascara which which, on reflection, I don't actually think it's out yet. However, when the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara wasn't out, they had it in my local Superdrug, so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go and look for this new Maybelline one. Unfortunately, could not find it anywhere. Anyway, couldn't find that, and so I went into Space NK, and I was looking for the Charlotte Tilbury New Matte Blushes. And again, they didn't have them. So in this video instead, I, I'm gonna get those Charlotte Tilbury blushes, I'm gonna order them online, but I thought, you know, I'll be quicker to get, buy them in store. Didn't have them. But instead of those, I was sent a PR package from Beauty Bay, who have just launched their their own brand liquid blushes which makes me extremely happy because beauty bay own brand products most of them are actually so good these are nine pounds each there are four shades and you get a massive tube actually you get six mil of product in here which let me just compare to my made by mitchell the made by mitchell ones are also six mil actually hang on how does that work because the beauty bay ones look way bigger i don't know which shade to use spring <gasps> oh that looks like a really nice pink it's got like a big doe for applicator they remind me of the texture of like the nyx soft matte lip cream kind of things peaches <gasps> oh peaches that looks nice oh my this one is called reef which is the deepest shade okay yeah that one would be too too bright on me i think but that is a gorgeous coral color i guess that's why it's called reef then lastly we've got the shade blooming which is like a hot pink which again i think that one will probably be a bit a bit bright on me but oh these look so pretty and they sort of blend out into this like soft matte texture okay shit now i've got to why do I not bring makeup wipes over here? I'm gonna go with spring first, and then if this is too light, I will add peaches over the top. This looks like quite a natural blush for me, but I kinda need that because sometimes I just go a bit too much with it, <laughs> as I'm sure you probably all know. So let's blend this in first. Oh my God, they blend so easy. That is such a nice, natural, everyday pink tone blush, which I think this on fair skin would be stunning. I know that I normally go for something a bit brighter, but in terms of like something a bit more natural, that color is gorgeous. I love it because it's me and I love my blush. I'm going to take a little bit of peaches over the top. In terms of the formula, they actually feel very similar to the Made by Mitchell ones. They're that sort of like whipped texture and you just need to sort of like dab over them. You don't want to drag them around too much, but oh my God, they're so nice. Oh my God, they are so nice. I like, I like a lot. They are so approved powder. I mentioned the Beauty Bay, not Beauty Bay, the I Heart Revolution Peach powder in a tiktok video the other day and on that video somebody commented the coconut powder is their favorite from my heart revolution i've never tried the coconut powder from my heart revolution so let's try this one instead since when did it come with a powder puff i definitely lost mine years ago this one definitely looks lighter i will do a flashback test at the end of this video it's like a very 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 light beige oh 
boy, that concealer is creased like crazy under my eyes. But let's just blend back over these creases. And then <laughs> I'm going to use the powder puff that comes with it. Actually, this is quite a solid powder puff. And just press this. Wait, you know what? I'm going to use this powder puff on one side and then my Trigwell one on the other. Between this kind of cheap powder puff and the, and the Trigwell one, there is definitely a difference. I thought this one was going to feel like my Primark one, but it's actually a lot like stiffer and it almost has like a sharp edge to it. I hate when powder puffs have that. I'm going to use my Trigwell one on the other side. And what I like to do is like take some like this, tap off the excess, and then just do like one little dab on the back of my hand and then I go back in and use this bit later. So let me just re-blend the crease. Oh my God, that was too much product. And I know it's an expensive powder puff, but it is very fluffy and soft. Okay, it is definitely quite white, isn't it? I wonder if, let me just use this to set my whole face. I'm just gonna do a little bit of like baking under here and then I'll brush it all away and see if it leaves me looking ghostly. Why have I just set my eyelid? I haven't done my eyeshadow. There's no going back now. I'm gonna have to, shit, I didn't wanna do that. I'm gonna have to just. <sighs> On the rest of my face, I'm just taking a brush. Oh shit, that was too much. Oh no. Question is, will this all brush away to reveal? No, it won't. <laughs> to reveal the true shade of my foundation? No, it's very light. Crap. Okay, my thoughts are, where was this powder when I didn't fake tan? Like this would have been the perfect powder shade because quite often a lot of them are too sort of orange toned. So I would say if you do have pale skin and you're looking for a powder that's not orange, this is a good one. However, it has definitely lightened my foundation. Oh well, I'm sure we can fix things. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. This is in the shade two, I think. Thing is though, that powder set my makeup really nicely. It was just a little bit too light, but I do like it. They had a three for two deal in Superdrug, and so I got the powder and the skin tint, and then I was like running around everywhere for about 10 minutes, like what else do I want for free? And I decided on this, which obviously I didn't get for free. I think I got the powder for free because it was the cheapest, but this is the Milani Bella Bellini blush, and it looks like a pinker version of Luminoso. I don't think I've tried this one before, and I just thought it looked really nice. It's very, very, that's definitely more like powdery than Luminoso. Recently, I've been going for more of a pink. Oh my God, it's got such a, what the hell? It's just like gold highlight and no pink. Oh no, I don't like it. I thought it was gonna be just like a shimmery pink, but it's actually coming across more of just like a gold with a slight pink undertone. I didn't think it was gonna be quite this shimmery. I mean, it does look quite pretty, but it's really giving me like NARS orgasm, sleek. Oh, what was that sleek blush called that was so popular back in the days on YouTube? I can't remember, but it's just not. Like it's a bit too yellowy of a gold for me and it's not enough pink. That is such a shame. And it's very dusty compared to the Luminoso blush. Sad, don't have a new highlighter, so I'm gonna use this one from Beauty Bay, which is called Beam. I mean, I don't need any more on my cheeks. I'm just gonna put a bit down my nose, <laughs> a little bit. Try again. <laughs> A lot down my nose. So for my eyebrows, I got sent this from Half Magic, which I have no idea how Half Magic got my information. A little bit concerned, actually. Um, but this is the Grippy Brow Sculpting Gel, which is supposed to be like soap brows. Oh, okay. It really does look like a gel. It's like this clear gel consistency. But this is what the wand looks like. So it's got longer bristles on one side. But I'm guessing this side is to sort of run the product through your brows and then sort of use the other side. Actually, no, you can still use the long side to then sort sort of sculpt them. Oh my gosh, it definitely feels very sticky. It's not got any color to it, it really is clear, so it doesn't leave like a white residue. Oh my God, I need to trim my eyebrows, don't I? The only thing is it doesn't really pick up that much on the brush. But let me know your thoughts, guys. Are we over the whole soap brow thing? I mean, I never really got into it. I did for a little bit, I guess, where I was like sticking my eyebrows up, but it's just too much of a faff. It really feels like it's stuck my brows down. I mean, my eyebrows are very uneven, but can you sort of see? Like it's given that like laminated eyebrow effect. I'm just taking a little bit of the Benefit Brow Pencil to just fill in the gaps. This one is actually in the shade grey. The brow gel has dried a little bit shiny. Hopefully that's picking up on camera. Eyebrows are not perfect today, but that will do. I do quite like that brow gel. I mean, that brow gel has definitely made my eyebrows feel very fluffy and they feel like they're not going anywhere. Like they feel a little bit tacky almost. It's probably just because I don't tend to do the whole kind of like sticking down soap brow things. I tend to prefer my eyebrows to look a little bit more naturally fluffy and not so like glued to my face, if that makes sense. So like I said, I went into Space NK looking for the Charlotte Tilbury blushes and I came out with the Nimya palette. They just had them sitting on the counter casually. Um, and I was like, you know what? I really want to try the Nimya palette. So I got one of the Nimya palettes. Oh God, it, it does look stunning. Like to me, I love the color story of it. I love how you've got all your neutrals in there, but there are a couple of like bright pops of color. I think it looks gorgeous. 
the shimmers in this look so beautiful. Like Mr. Oh my God, it's so soft. Mr. and Mrs. Tutorials Disco Stick looks like a stunning shade. Let's do Final Boss. Let's do the bright blue shimmer. That one feels slightly different in texture, actually. That one feels a little bit thicker and not as foily. Mr. and Mrs. Tutorials. Oh my God, that is so Stunning. Oh, it's got like little fine micro glitters in it. One sec, I will do a close up in a second. Disco stick shade. That is like a duochrome, but also very thin feeling and very foily. We've then got Final Boss, which I love the name of. Um, That one is very pretty. It's not as like foiled as the others, but it feels very nice. The Brr Brr blue shade feels very different in texture to the others. It's slightly thicker and it's not as foiled and like shimmery. Let's just do the other two shimmers while we're here. Level up and supreme queen so let's do level up that one feels like another one of the thin foily shades and supreme queen feels like a thicker shade does that make sense i'm gonna do one of them here okay that one is also very pigmented very stunning and then let's do the green greenish one on the side of my hand oh that is gorgeous actually okay so that is those there they are slightly differing in textures um some of them feel thinner and f more foily than the others but in general they look pretty good to me i found a piece of kitchen roll stupid idiot me set her eyelids so i'm just gonna go in with the beauty bay eye base and just hope that it works over the top of powder to be fair i did this yesterday i recreated zendaya's makeup look on my social media platforms yesterday but i did it over the top of like day old makeup that i'd been wearing since the morning we have made it work i'm gonna start with a bright orange which is called Vur, and i'm just gonna take this in my crease and sort of wing it out. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do at the moment, but I will figure it out as we go along. Okay, so I mean, so far, <laughs> that shade is definitely very pigmented. That shade seems to be blending out beautifully on its own. I was gonna dip into one of the other colors, but actually, Maybe I don't need it to blend it out, but it's incredibly pigmented. This is gonna be a very dramatic look. I'm gonna wing it out quite far, just cause I can. And makeup is fun. Part of me just doesn't wanna go in with the blues because this is just such an incredible color by itself. But I'm gonna dip into Bad Beach, which is the shade above it, just to blend it out a little bit. It's like a very pale orange color. And now we have a pretty sunset. But I feel like that almost overtook some of the bright orange and I want it to be really bright in that crease because I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do like a cut crease kind of thing. So I'm just going back in with the really bright orange. I'm just trying to picture in my head what I'm doing before I go ahead and do it. Do that. There, and then do blue and then orange. Okay, yeah, you know what? Let's cut the crease. I'm just gonna use my eye base again. This could go horribly wrong, but bear with me, trust the process. We're all coming along for this ride, apparently. And onto this, I'm gonna take the blue, which is called Brr Brr, and I'm gonna just put this over the top problem with cut creases is they give you wrinkles really bad because you have to keep doing that. If I did cut creases every day, I, have to, I would have such deep forehead wrinkles. I'm taking that blue shade, which is gorgeous, might I add. It does feel like a little bit of a thicker shimmer eyeshadow though. It's not as thin as the other ones. What I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to take Disco Stick, which is like the light white bluey duochrome kind of shade. And I'm just going to put some of this over the top. Oh, that shade is gorgeous. Okay, yeah, I way prefer that shade, actually. It's a lot more, like, glittery and foiled, which hopefully is coming across on camera. On the outer corners, I'm going to take the shade Royal Family, which is a really, really deep blue, which I'm a little bit scared of. Because dark blues can be a little bit problematic, so I'm just taking literally the tiniest amount. I'm just going to deepen up the outer corners with this. I am a little bit scared of that colour because dark, really, really dark blues are not generally the easiest to blend. But I'm kind of using this as my wing. It definitely does the job, but that shade is not the easiest to blend and it scares me a little bit, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to take a tiny bit of this on a, an angled brush. Yeah, that is such a deep blue. But I'm going to use this as like an eyeliner, I guess, and then smoke it out again. I've got no idea what's going on. I mean, it's incredibly dramatic. Looks kind of cool. Don't look like myself, but that's okay. I'm just smudging out that wing with a little pencil brush. Now what do I do? I think I'm going to put a bit of the orange on my lower lash line. Oh! <gasps> Or just put it directly in my eyeball. Just brushing away the fallout. I've just brought that orange all the way into my inner corners. I'm going to take the shade Disco Stick again and I'm just going to put that on my inner corners. 
I mean, of all the shades that I used, they are all incredibly pigmented and beautiful. I would say that my favourite shades are Disco Stick and the Mr. and Mrs. Tutorials colour. Like, those shimmers are both gorgeous. I mean, it looks pretty cool. I've got to say. <gasps> and a blue mascara. Oh, 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 oh. This is about to be leveled up. Okay, so for eyeliner, I got sent a couple of bits from... Is this pronounced Mina? It's like three Ina. But I think it's Mina. I have got a 24-hour eye stick and... Oh, no, it's a colour a pen eyeliner. I thought this was a pencil. I was gonna put it in my waterline, but no, maybe not. It's a liquid liner, but oh my god, that is so pigmented. I wish I could experiment and then take it off because I kind of want to do like a circle going around the wing or like a squiggle. No, so stop. I'm just gonna define. I don't want to do this. I don't want to ruin it. I'm going to save this for another day before I get carried away. I don't want to ruin what I've already done. But I do have this, which is the 24-hour eye stick in the shade 791. I'm just going to put some of this in my waterline. I know it's not the same shade, but it'll do. Just to put something in there, you know. I can't see. I've just drawn it on my contact lenses. Then I've got this. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I've got the new MAC Fix Plus Stay Over Setting Spray. Optimized fine mist spray pump, but delivers weightless mist and effortless even application. Transfer resistant, long lasting, immediately moisturizes skin, does not clog pores, does not cause acne. Dermatologist tested. Long lasting setting spray. That is what we like to hear. <gasps> It's actually a fine mister. I've got to do the eyeshadow test, so I'm gonna take, uh, let's take the bright orange and we'll see if this makeup setting spray sets it into place. Feels nice. Doesn't really have that much of a scent to it. My skin definitely feels a little bit more hydrated, you know? Maybe just because it's wet at the moment. It feels quite hydrating, which I wasn't necessarily expecting for like a long lasting mist, but it's made my face definitely more glowy than it was before, I think. Is it dry? I can't tell. We'll deal with that later. Yeah, I think it is dry, but my face just looks quite shiny, which is not what not what I expected from like a long lasting setting spray. It feels like more of like an oily one. I'm just gonna repowder, repowder those super shiny areas. I mean, it's made my skin look really nice and given it more of, of a like luminous glow. Is this dry yet? It still feels a bit sticky. I will have to come back to that. For my mascara, anyway, what I was trying to say is I've got the Mina mascara, the 24 hour level up mascara, but I've also got these from Glitter. And cosmetics. These are the Spectra Lash in different colours and I have a blue one so I'm thinking I'm going to do the blue on my lower lashes to match the eyeshadow and then I'll do the black on my top lashes. So let's test this Mina mascara because this brand is now in Superdrug. It's like a metal sort of packaging. Oh, so this is the brush. Kinda looks exactly like the Too Faced Better Than Sex brush. Oh, it's a very dry formula, which is usually good for volume. I say usually because I think this is kind of, it's almost like brushing out the volume as you apply it like it really brushes out the clumps which is good if you don't like a clumpy mascara but it's kind of taking away the volume from it i'm finding that it's a little bit too dry like i quite like a dry formula mascara but it's almost a little bit difficult to build because it sort of feels like it's drying out i mean it's done the job it's just a bit tricky to build it and then i'm taking the blue glisten cosmetics mascara i do have a discount code with them by the way which is an affiliate code it is so 20 for 20 percent off their website this one has got like a really spiky looking bristly brush which if i'm honest doesn't really seem to be applying very much to my lashes at all it just doesn't transfer very much product onto them at all but they do this mascara in like every single color of the rainbow pretty much i'm just struggling to get it to actually apply any to my lashes which is such a shame i usually love glisten cosmetic stuff like i love their eyeliners yeah that is such a shame i had this vision of like these thick blue lower lashes but it's just not really worked that well this must be dry by now let's test it oh you know what? That is so surprising. I really thought it was going to smudge because it felt quite oily on my face. Oh my god. That's a good one, you know? That's a really good one. It has not smudged a single bit. What the hell is in this, Matt? I'm very impressed with that because it still felt a little bit, like, oily, but it's not going anywhere. For my lips, I have got some of these from NYX, which are called the NYX Fat Oil Lip Drips, which interesting name. They come in all sorts of different shades. They've got some deeper ones. They've got some really bright ones. So I'm going to use one of those, but just to line my lips first, I'm going to use the Mina Automatic Lip Pencil in 503. Automatic lip pencil? That sounds like a bit of me. Mm, twistable. 
Oh my god. It's like my lip colour. It's very creamy. I really like that colour and I love how it's retractable. We know how I feel about retractable lip liners. You know what? I know this might seem a bit crazy. I kind of want to try this shade just to see if it's as dark as it appears or whether it will be a sort of like Clinique black honey type of situation. This shade is called That's Chic. You know what? Maybe I'll try it on my hand first, but it's a dark purple. Oh, they smell like sweets and I love the look of the applicator. It's like a little chubby applicator. Okay, it's quite a sheer purple. Let's try it. Let's try it. As I suspected. You definitely can build up the pigment. It feels like a gloss. It's a little bit sticky, but not to the point where it feels stringy. Like it feels very hydrating. That's a nice little lip combo. However, just out of curiosity, I want to see what this looks like with one of the other shades. So let's just reapply. I think I'm going to go for this shade, which is called Follow Back. It's like a slightly shimmery one. It's like a shimmery orangey bronze color. There we go. You know what? They feel nice. It kind of just feels like a gloss though. When these arrived, it was like viral TikTok sensation. It kind of just feels like a lip gloss, to be honest. It doesn't necessarily feel like an oil. Oils tend to be a bit more slippery, but these have a tiny bit of stickiness to them, but it does feel very hydrating. I, I feel like it, it feels nice. They smell nice. Nothing like crazy, crazy amazing though. Bear with me. I'm just gonna go stick on some lashes and I will be right back. I'm going for these ones, which are by a brand called Aicha in Forest. Okay, wait, is that lash too big or does it kind of go with the look? Oh, I don't know. I feel like they're too big. I've not worn lashes this big in ages. Oh my God, I feel so much like my old YouTube self with this makeup look, like the crazy dramatic, like cut crease kind of look with big lashes. I haven't worn lashes like this in ages. And honestly, I think that these are too big and they kind of, they feel heavy on my eyes, you know? Let's just do a quick flashback test. I'll be right back. Okay, so I don't think there's necessarily flashback, but everything just looks a little bit pale there we go this is me done in conclusion with the nimbu palette it is a gorgeous palette and i do really like it i think if you do have other palettes that have similar colors you don't necessarily need it i mean you don't need any eyeshadow palette i guess and for 50 pounds it's an expensive palette so that is me done guys i hope you enjoyed this if you did please give this a thumbs up i will leave everything that i used down below i feel like it was kind of mixed you know my favorite things from this video are probably the beauty bay blushes to be honest that nyx skin tint stuff i will definitely continue to use i'll probably use a little bit less of it next time because it was more full coverage than I thought it was going to be. And I really like the lip liner as well. Oh, and the setting spray. So I hope you guys are doing good. It's so weird looking at myself in the viewfinder. It looks like me from like a couple years ago. I hope you guys are all doing good. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in my next video. Bye.